is my desire to honor you. Lord, with all my heart, I worship you. All I have within me, I give you praise. All that I adore is in you. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I awake. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, Every moment I awake, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, have your way in me. Welcome, welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Center broadcast. I'm your host, Gerald Walton, Elder Walton, Elder or Pastor Walton. But my name is Gerald, and those are the gifts, and those are the ordained offices I have. But welcome. We're glad to have you today. Today we're going to have a wonderful day in God. And the purpose for this broadcast is to encourage you, lift you up, and to magnify the Lord. When you magnify the Lord, everything falls in place. But that's why we share this broadcast, to lift up the name of Jesus and bless his holy name so that all your challenges and circumstances he can take care of if you believe and only believe. Well, today is a good day. I'd like to encourage you with the word before we have our message today. And it's a great message. It's timely. And I want to share it with you today. Amen. But if you'd like to know more about New Life in Christ Christian Center, you can reach us at uh, 513-257-9121. Or you can reach us at New Life in Christ CC at Yahoo.com. New Life in Christ CC at Yahoo.com. We'll be happy to connect you with a conference call, or we can just uh, have a, a mutual virtual, uh, virtual contact with you. We love to do that with you. Um, but today's message, before we start, I want to share 1 John chapter 4, verse 12. 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 says, No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and, he, and his love is made complete in us. So God is love, and you're no closer to God than your neighbor. And the Bible says that we're to love one another. There's over 51 passages of Scripture which talks about loving one another, which is loving your neighbor. And your neighbor is the person next to you. And God's love is everlasting. God's love, Jesus told us the two great commandments, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. The second is like unto this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So we need love in the world. This love is the greatest love and it's through the love of God that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It needs to be spread abroad. It needs to be seen as light in the world. Amen. God's perfect love cast out fear. God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. So when we love one another, we love one another with that love 
which is the love of God. And it will bless people tremendously. It will help a person's day change. It would help a person to be encouraged and not discouraged when we love one another. So 1 John 4 and 12, no one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Let the love of God be shed abroad in your heart by the Holy Ghost and love one another and love your neighbor as yourself today. God wants his love to be seen through his people. Amen. So I hope that blesses you that we are to love one another. And the opposite of love is fear. And, and, and when you don't love one another, you don't care because love is sharing and caring. And love also shows kind acts and deeds. So that's why we need love. We need love in the world. And we have so much little of. The psalmist said, we have so much, we need more love. We have so little of. It's so true. Dionne Warwick so, uh, sung that song. It's so true today. That's what the world needs, God's love. Okay, well, today's message I'm going to go right into the message today. I pray this be a blessing to you. I'm going to pray before we start. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, your peace, your kindness. We give thanks to you at all times because your praise shall continually be in our mouths. We acknowledge you about this message, dear, dear Lord, so that you could lead and guide. Bless the hearers of this word. May they be changed and never the same again after listening to this message. The gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, today's message is God's continual presence. What's on my heart is to share with you God's continual uh, presence, the presence of God. What the world needs is more of his presence. Amen. And the good news, if you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, his presence is within you. Amen. The scripture says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in you. So he dwells in you. His presence dwells in you. And we'll talk about it a little more. Really, when you say the presence of God, you are referring to worshiping him. Worshiping him for who he is. And that's when you have reflection. You ref have time to reflect on him. And you're, there's a stillness and quietness to know that he is God. There's a wonder even when you worship the, God, worship the Lord. There's a wonder and, he, and because who he is, he's, we are to be in awe of him and give him honor and give him obedience. Desire, God's desire for us is his, our obedience to him. And to know him, to worship him means to know him and to understand he's holy. And we must come boldly before the throne of grace and humble ourselves. Because he is holy and he is almighty. So God is omnipotent, has unlimited power. He's almighty God. So in order for us to appreciate his presence, we must know that when we worship him, we worship him for who he is and his presence what is God's presence? He's omnipotent, which is he's almighty, unlimited power, authority. He's also omniscient, which means he knows everything. And God is also omnipresent, present everywhere. His divine presence encompasses the whole universe. And don't you want to be in awe of him? 
And don't you want to respect him and bless his holy name? Now, if you're not aware of his presence, then you may be too much into yourself or too much into the things of this world. But God sees everything and knows everything. And all he's ever desired is a people that will love him because he loves you first. He is love, the epitome of what love is, the God kind of love, the highest love there is. So we worship him because he's holy and we give him honor, which all the honor and all the glory belongs to him. And I'm so grateful to know and understand that. He is a loving father. Amen. And so we go to 95, Psalms 95, since we're talking about worship, in order to understand the presence of God, we must worship him. Because when we worship him, his presence is made known. But in Psalms 95, it reads as follows, verse 6 and 7, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Amen. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, the voice of the Lord, the word of God. Amen. Hidden in your heart. Amen. Heart faith. So to worship God, the Father, is to know him and experience his presence in you. God wants you to experience his presence. Worshiping him, you can experience his presence. His presence. Praising him and giving thanks. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. You can experience his presence. Amen. He wants you to experience his presence. He wants you to know he loves you. He wants you to know he loves you. He loved you before the foundations of the world and that he created you in his image and likeness. And that's why he sent Christ. He sent Christ to restore us back to him. Reconcile, restore us back to him, redeem us, and save us from the sins of the world so that we may have eternal life and experience his presence, the presence of love, the presence of just who he is, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, and be aware of his presence. Were you aware of his presence today or were you in so much of a hurry to do this and to do that? God sees and knows everything. He who made the ears, can he not hear? He who made and formed the eyes, can he not see? Amen. He who is above and sits on the throne. Amen. So God's presence, a continual presence, is basically having a relationship with him, a relationship with the Father, a relationship with the Son, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, for they are one. But the Father, we're talking about the Father today and how we can have a continual or experience a continual presence of God in your life. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he's good because his mercy endures forever. When you give thanks, you can experience his presence. When you complain and doubt and are fearful, then the enemy is trying to steal what God rightfully wants you to know about him, which is the truth of his love. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And that freedom is presence. The freedom of God to not be in bondage no more. But understand his amazing grace and his love and truth for you. So to experience God's presence is to believe the gospel. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of the kingdom of God. If you want to experience God's presence, you must be born again. A fool says there's no God. But in God, we live, move, and have our being. Let's go to John 3. And if you haven't received Christ, I am going to minister to you about receiving Christ. And in John chapter 3, verse 14 through 21, this is the beginning of his presence coming into you. But you must believe the gospel. You must believe, and I'm going to share the gospel with you. Amen. Today is the day of salvation. If you haven't received Christ, today is the day to receive him. And in John chapter 3, verse 14, it reads as follows. And as Moses, this is Jesus speaking, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him, the Son of Man, the Son of God, should not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life is eternal presence with the Lord. Forever with the Lord is to, is to have his presence on you forever and ever. The family of God even, which God originally always intended. And then 15 says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, believe means to have faith in God and to trust him what he says in his word. With your heart, with your heart, with all your heart, in him should not perish but have everlasting life for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world. That's not why Jesus came, to condemn, condemn people. No, he didn't. It says, but that the world through him might be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the bondage and the consequence and the penalty of sin. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. God wants you to be free. He wants you to walk in his love and experience his presence. You experience God's presence with his love in your heart, richly and deep in your heart. Amen. Because you have a continual relationship of you worshiping him and praising him and giving thanks to him and talking to him and listening to him, which is giving uh, your undiv undivided attention. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen and I will be exalted in the earth. Be still in your prayer time. Don't be in a rush, but be still and get acquainted with him through worship, through praise, through thanksgiving, through prayer and reading his word. Amen. So in verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is condemnation when you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is condemnation that light, Christ, is coming to the world, and men love darkness. Darkness condemns people. Living in darkness, living in disobedience and rebellion, and living in idolatry, and, uh, and being an idol to yourself even. You can be an idol to yourself, which says you don't have time for God. You just do whatever you want to do and live the way you want to live. That's an idol. Yourself can be an idol. But listen to this, 19. And this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. 
So the condemnation comes to those who dwell in darkness because their deeds are evil. Learn behavior even. Learn behavior from believing a lie. And Jesus said Satan was the father of lies, and he was a liar from the beginning. And that's why Jesus said in John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I came to give you life and life more abundantly. Let's go on. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light. So this is the, the fruit of condemnation that people rather dwell in darkness. And what happens when they rather dwell in darkness, they hate the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved, corrected. See, the light of God dispels darkness and brings truth and corrects you from going on further to destruction. So that's why Christ came to give you his life and be the light of the world and so that you can walk in light rather than darkness. That's the gospel. That's the truth. So it says here, for everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deed should be reproved, corrected, reprimanded. I know some, I know I want, I don't want to be going on in denial and, and also not, be, uh, not obeying the truth. And that's when you know somebody really loves you, he'll, they'll tell you the truth. It might hurt. You might not appreciate it, but love speaks to truth. It speaks to truth and love. And that's what God is saying. For everyone that doeth evil hated the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth, receives and accepts the truth, cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. God wants to correct those in darkness and wants to, uh, wants to come into their hearts, their lives. When you say, Lord, come into my heart, that means your life. Amen? And when that happens, your life is not your own anymore. It's his life living on the inside of you. What a relationship. To, to show you the truth and to show you the way. Jesus said that I'm, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And all that means love, and all that love guarantees you his presence, a continual presence, a continual relationship where you're walking in the light and you're learning by the grace of God. You're learning about Christ. So God gave his son, Jesus Christ, to bring us back to him because of his love for mankind. That's love. Jesus came to restore and redeem and save that which is lost, lost in sin. And that's why God sent him, because he loves humanity. He sent his son to be this, the ransom and pay the debt of sin on our behalf. Amen. So that we can experience death, burial, and resurrection as he did from the Father on the third day, but with us, the newness of life because we believe that he died for the sins of the world. So likewise, the Bible tells us that we're to walk in the newness of life. And the newness of life is the presence of God, a continual presence. Because the Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And his continued presence has to do with the word, the word of God, even. Because the word of God wants us living in your heart by faith. Amen. Then it's continual. That means it's a continuum. God will never leave you nor forsake you. But you must receive, believe, and grow. 
in this re continued relationship so that you can experience God's continued presence. That's what the world of, of, the, of the world today needs. The world today needs God's presence in you. Not no building. You are the building. When you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, you become God's temple. And his presence dwells in you. And that's why we worship him in spirit and truth. God is looking for them who will worship him in spirit and truth. Now, let's go to Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and it says trust. So how do we know we have the presence? Well, we know the word of God is hidden in our hearts or it is to be in our hearts, and that's referred to as heart faith, deep in your heart, and that means he remains. But God, we must obey his commandments in order to live and experience his presence, his omnipresence, his omniscient, uh, and so that we can be aware every day, waking up every day. Amen. All creation groans for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes, even creation of respects the creator. So in Psalms, I mean Proverbs, excuse me, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways. He will direct your path. That's how you maintain a continual presence of God in your life. The spirit of God is in your heart when you believe Christ died for you and came to save you and give you eternal life because the Father sent him. So this continual presence is trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, which uh, your soul is your, is your senses, but rather have the heart, put the word of God in your heart and believe with all your heart what God says in his word. Now let's go to Psalm 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, verse 11. And let's read there God's continual presence in his people. It's even his divine nature, holiness. He said, be holy for I'm holy. What is God saying? Be, be godly. Be obedient. Be followers of God as dear children and walk in love. So in Psalm 16 and 11, it reads as follows. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The blessing of the Lord maketh you rich when you understand his presence is for you. His will, his presence, which is his will, is for you. And it says here again, Thou will show me the path of life, and thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, there might not be the same kind of pleasures that man calls pleasures. Because we're talking about the spirit of the Lord and we're talking about a divine nature, which is something new that you've never experienced before. That's why God blesses you with um, joy that's unspeakable and full of glory, the Bible says, and the peace of God that passes all understanding. That's spirit. That's the spirit man receiving what God wants to give you in your spirit so that he can continue so you can continue to have fellowship with him and walk with him and talk with him. Amen. And Psalms 23 is a book which talks about the security of God's presence in your life. In these days and times, you want to understand God is your covering and God is your rock. And through Christ, 
God is your shepherd. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 23. Psalms 23 is a revelation. And uh, it's an awesome revelation because it speaks volumes. And you may have memorized it, but God is speaking uh, a revelation revealing himself to you through his son as shepherd. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That means you shall not want any good thing. That means he's your provider, your protector, vindicator, your security blanket. It says here, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures, which is a restful life. A restful life of peace even. Even in the midst of a storm. He says, he leadeth me beside the still waters. Now notice the Lord is... The shepherd, David is saying, and he's doing the leading. So to experience God's presence, you must surrender so he can lead you and reveal to you his blessing, his love, his presence, his power, his glory. For he's bringing many sons to glory. And these sons understand God's continual presence with them. So it goes on, it says, he restored my soul. Refreshes your thinking, your mind. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Again, he's doing the leading. You're doing the surrendering and submission and being obedient. It said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death even, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comforts me. And so the rod and staff who has the rod and staff? The great shepherd Jesus. And it's, that means he's got your back. He will protect you. And then it says, Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Then it says here, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, which is God's continual presence. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in his house, dwell in his presence forever. That's God's continued presence. It's his life in you. Not your own separate life, but his life in you. He wants to show you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. He wants you to know the truth of his love for you. Amen. So if we go to Hebrews, let's go to Hebrews and talk more about God's continued presence in our lives. Amen. In the children of God. Amen. And God wants us to be secure and stable and trust him with all our hearts. Amen. With all our heart. Amen. And then renew our mind to line up with his word in our heart. Your mind thinking has to line up, be in agreement with God's word in your heart. That's why the Bible says in Romans 12 and 2, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and will of God for you. God wants something good to happen for you. That's his will, to bless you. And give you an expected end. But here, Hebrews, in the Lord good, it's so good. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Makes you want to say, mm mm mm. <laughs> okay, Hebrews uh, 13, verse 8 and 9, it reads as follows Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrine from Christ. He is Lord. Hallelujah. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace. And then it goes on, not with meats even, which are not profited them that have been occupied therein. Amen. And 15 says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, 
and it goes to work continually. How you want to experience God's continual pray presence is to offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, uh, giving thanks to his name. Oh, it's a blessing to give thanks to God. It says, give thanks to God for this is the will of, of God for you, concerning you. The opposite of thanks, people who are ungrateful and thankful are complainers and murmurers and whisperers who complain. But when you're thankful and grateful, you're knowing who he is. You're beginning to understand the faithfulness, the mercy, the grace, the goodness, the kindness, the patience he has for you. And that's greater. That's far greater. So the eyes and attention are your eyes and attention on the world and things that's going on in the world? Or is it or should it be on the Lord Jesus who will point you to the Father and reveal the Father to you in his word? That's what you have to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith or are you living by your senses or you living by your flesh, or you living by the course of the way this world runs and operates, where you should be in the kingdom, which is, what is the kingdom? God's righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, living all in you, God's continued presence, amen. So how do we, or how can we experience and live with God's continued presence. Well, Jesus has made it clear. Amen. Let's go to Matthew chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus has made it clear what he came here to do for you. He came to die for our sins. The Father sent him to do that. He came to seek that which is lost and set the captives free and open the prison door and it preached the acceptable year of the Lord's return. Hallelujah. But let's listen here. Jesus said, uh, Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. So Jesus has come unto me in life. You can come to Jesus. You can learn from him. He'll give you rest. He'll refresh your thinking from being worried. He understands what we go through. That's why he said, come to me. The Lord Jesus, the King of Kings, humbles himself and says, you can come to me. What a blessing. Mm -mm -mm. God gives you his son, Jesus Christ, to live in your heart. And that's God's continued presence. Matthew 18, I mean 28, 18 through 20. Let's read that because this is significant to those that believe, those that are the children of God. This is very significant. With the presence of God, you bring it into the world. You bring it into your life, your family, your loved ones, amen, his spirit, the fruit of his spirit even which represents his attributes, which represents God's presence living on the inside of you. But in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, the disciples, and he gave them a commission. But first he said, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. That's the gospel. So, and then he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, people, cultures, 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. God's continued presence, giving the disciples a commission, giving us a commission with his presence, with his presence is fullness of joy and peace and his righteousness and his goodness is to be taken into the world. Amen. You say, how, what does that look like? Well, that's through prayer and asking God and, and seeking him. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added unto you. And trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him in all your ways. God will reveal it to you and show you. Amen. That's uh, with the body of Christ, with brothers and sisters, but also in, with you, where you live at. Because all of us don't live in the same neighborhood. We kind of live in different neighborhoods, members of the body of Christ. But God wants to do twofold. He wants to want you to do the Great Commission in your personal identity in Christ and commission that Christ gives you in your neighborhood, in the marketplace, by you planting and water, watering God's goodness, and then also working as co-laborers in the local fellowship. And maybe not just your own, but other fellowships, because God's doing a radical thing. What matters most is the witness of Christ, hallelujah, the purpose of God for mankind, which is to save, heal, deliver, set them free, through his son, who took on the sins of the world so that they may have eternal life and be forever with the Lord. So God is doing that. He, but he's doing it with his presence. That's what I want to say last. The presence of God is the almighty God's presence in you to go into the world and let people know that Jesus is God. Or Jesus is Lord. Amen. And share the gospel. I hope this was a blessing to you. I hope it was a blessing to you. And may God richly bless you. And may he order your steps. And bless you and your family. Amen. And may your family declare in their hearts that as for me and my house, we will worship the Lord. But then we will worship the Lord by carrying his presence wherever we go. Have a blessed day.